Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. My name is James Taylor. It is the 21st of December 2021 and I'm being very precise on my date because maybe it isn't. Um, today we're looking at a Python library called Freeze Gun. Freeze Gun is a library which I don't think you would ever use in production, but we certainly use it an awful lot in uh, the company I work at. Um, it allows you to basically mock uh, the date time functions uh, in a very, very uh, efficient way. Uh, and you may be saying, well, I can just use mock. Like mock is built into Python. I can just use mock to replace the date time functions I care about. Um, and the, the answer to that is that maybe you don't know how your date time functions are, are being used or maybe the implementation that they're using may to cause slightly different functions. Um, uh, for example, they may swap from using date time to using time, times or just dates. Um, and, and actually, this is a really, really cool little feature, uh, which allows us to mock. It is super easy to use. Uh, so what you would do is you would open up some Python, like this. Uh, and you would go, uh, so you've got some code, which is import date time def foo. Um, and, and this is doing something. So the, the example we have, for example, the problem we have is we're using uh, certificates in one example. And those certificates expire. So And usually they expire in 12 months. So every year all our tests suddenly fail because the certificate expires. So we want to make sure all our tests are running on a particular date. Uh, and we say, we may want to say, well, what happens after it goes after this? So I want to set my computer t computer's time to a particular date. So in this instance, I'm just going to do a very simple little um, function. So I'm just going to return um, uh, uh, date time, uh, actually from uh, dot now. Okay. So obviously when I run this function, I get back the current date time. Um, so what we would want to do is we, we would, in our test module, we would to import freeze time, which is a wonderful little function. I'm just going to check that. Uh, you can all read this. Yeah, you can. Right. Uh, and freeze time is actually a decorator. So I've got this test error here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate it, freeze time. And the freeze time I'm going to go for is 2021 dash. Um, well, let's go for the 1st of January. There we go. Um, and then in here, I'm going to call foo. I'm going to print the output of foo. Because obviously I shouldn't do that. I should really do um, uh, assert that the date is the same. Okay. Um, and then run that. Um, and I I haven't got that right. So it's, it's, it's from freeze gun import freeze. You see, I actually don't ever do this. And now if I just call test now, which will, call, which will run it, you'll see actually it's printing off the, the re correct response date. So the correct, the wrong response, but it's actually frozen that. So I haven't had to worry about mocking it inside my actual function. This is what my actual class would look like or my file, my, my module would look like. Uh, this is actually what the, the test would look like. And it, it, it's mocked out perfectly. Now, the thing about Freeze Gun is that it's super nice. Uh, you can do uh, particular times. You can actually have as keyword args. You can do things like um, uh, nice inputs on it. So so if you want human readables, we use something called BDD. Uh, we use like uh, either cucumber or celery, not celery, cucumber or gherkin or something, where this actually may appear in a, in a human readable text. We can rip that out and shove it in there. Um, and it's just a really nice little um, uh, function. Um, you can also use tick as well. With tick is very handy because you can say, um, for example, I, if I had um, my function was this uh, nowish equals date time dot now uh, from time import sleep. I think that's the most zen thing ever. Right, uh, sleep uh, two then equals uh, date time dot now and I'm going to return a tuple of nowish and uh, then then at this point when I run my function I should get back two different dates which are you know a couple seconds apart it took a couple seconds to run notice so if I run this now what happens is I should get the same time back twice um, so I need to actually run the function. You notice I got the exact the same back twice. 
Um, and that's not very good. So what I would now do is do tick equals true. Tick or ticks. Sorry, I don't use it. I, I've got to be honest with you. Tick equals true. And of course, it's Python. So we do that. And now what you should see is that these two timestamps should be, as you expect, two seconds apart. So depending on your situation, you either need to do that or you don't need to do that, depending on what you're going on. Um, so if you're testing like real time things, we're actually testing so which measures the time of a function or measures the time of an async task or something, then you would want to do tick equals true. It's just a really handy little function. Uh, I know people in the office love this function. I th I would possibly use their favorite thing because uh, it's just so wonderful. Sometimes you do want to say things like ignore in case these things are, are using time deltas or whatever internally for whatever reason. Um, you also need to be careful of if you're doing anything like um, using request to call server. So if you're beginning to go down that route of mocking and you've got something to call the server and it's trying to validate a certificate but you've frozen the time as being four years ago, it's going to go, well, this, this, this certificate hasn't even started yet. It's not valid from yet. So just be aware of that if you're going to be doing anything else. But it is a super powerful little uh, mock function. Um, and uh, like we wouldn't live without it. We don't build it into our product. It is built into the test utils. Uh, we would strip it from our product before before we, we put it in, in prod because uh, you wouldn't want anyone taking advantage of this function to like reset the clocks or anything. Um, but it's beautiful. It's a nice little, it's just a nice little library. Uh, it does one thing really, really well. Uh, and again, shove it in your in your toolbox of libraries you can just pull out when you need something. Um, and, and for testing, it's just uh, the bee's knees. Um, we're doing 24 libraries in 24 days. It's 21st today, which means there's three more to go. Uh, if you're enjoying them, it should be appearing over there. Um, so if you're enjoying these, feel free to click on one or hit like. Um, and we'll see you all in the next episode.